Last couple drivers here, Douglas Doucette, Jason Roy, Andrew Potter, and Ronnie Wimberly. Uh, bringing up the second to last ride. Uh, here's the NSS cookie jar car, Jason Roy. And Ecto Simsport, right behind in the 150 car. And just here, that front duo of Austin Cobb and Christopher Roberts. Back overtake racing with Diego Zuccarelli in the 21, going a bit defensive. Jason Roy following him in the NSS cookie jar car. Have they made a pit stop already? No, they have not. No, the only drivers that made a pit stop was uh, Coda Racing, Chris Cram in the 88. The only drivers come down and get service. Everyone else still yet to come into pit road for the first time. I think I'm confusing the Coda Racing car and the 75. Uh, I'd be forgiven because they're both green. Uh, so, overtake racing and Jason Roy of the NSS Cookie Jar team. This is for 16th place on the run down of the hairpin. Look at the Porsches on the ticker, 7th to fifth, uh, seventh to 13th, all Porsches. And a pair of Chevrolets up inside the top 10, as well as the leading Ferrari. And behind them, a little even crazier action. Here's Diego Zuccarelli and Jason Roy for Cookie Jar in the Corvette chasing the BMW here. car definitely backfiring as you mentioned <laughs> uh, there's something up with that car <laughs> yeah well, one thing you might want to check the engine for the car was it's constantly down the streets i thought the bmws were supposed to be the unreliable ones but that isn't modeled <laughs> <laughs> the closest battle on the racetrack right now is diego zuccarelli in the bmw jason roy andrew potter in the black and green ferraris and behind 16th and 17th down there. Jason Roy, Andrew Potter, there's a opening the door to the inside. Potter sees the door and will not jump through it just yet. He'll tuck back in line. Overtake racing, an LSM team with Federico Fernandez. Wow, this is, everyone's all over the place at the exit of turn one. <laughs> I don't know where everyone's going. started. Oh, got made some contact there with, I believe that's the overtake racing car, and stacked them all up. That would have to go to NSS Cookie Jar in the 75, sitting 22nd after starting in 10th. And I think the, uh, technically the one that has moved up the farthest would be the VRS Satellite Red with Alex Ellis, given that they had started. Oh, the yes. Yes. Uh, but then, Up into 6th. Yes. So next would be the and it's that's Cookie Jar team with Daniel Salmon behind the wheel. But Alex Ellis. Yeah, it did actually go a little bit higher last lap through. I think uh, McMillan he stuck in behind a lap car. And Daniel uh, Salmon in the NSS uh, Cookie Jar car. We'll move back to NSS Cookie Jar. Daniel Salmon in the 75. They've had a pretty good day quietly inside the top 10 now. Let's see if they can keep it up. They got uh, Farouk Manzar in behind in the Genesis in Sport Machine. So they're bearing down on them. When it goes to tail now, that damage hasn't really been holding up Genesis as much as we might have thought. And running within only about a hundredth of their best time of the day last time around. So Ooh, still fast and gained so much ground on the corner entry. Yeah, you're, you're talking about the Porsche being uh, nice in the corner, uh, entering the corners, or at least a lot of the Porsche drivers just throwing the car into, uh, into the corner. I'm uh, uh, quite a quite a big closing rate. Almost, whoa! He almost just <laughs> wow. He is going for it. Let's have a look. <laughs> Mailman is getting busy down here with sending all the mail. So I gotta get the USPS a whole uh, Porsche. Apparently, the way these guys have been sending it. Look how far back he almost hit a rear ending. Whoa, of here. <laughs> man! All right, Farouk, let's calm down. Uh, he sees that top 10 dangling in front of him, and he wants it. Uh, but Farouk Manzar and Daniel Salmon, the ones I'm keeping my eyes on, because I don't think we're quite done seeing this battle just yet. 
Look at how rough turn one is. His hands were all sorts of active trying to hold on to the car. And I think it's Farouk has thrown the car in pretty deep, but also I think Salmon's being fairly conservative right now by the looks of it. Oh, he was very conservative out of that corner. Got a very poor exit. Manzari's going to be all over him by the hairpin now. Or not. Has a look. Here he comes. Door open, and through comes Farouk Manzar. Takes 10th place away in the Genesis Simsport Porsche. Spot, though. And Cookie Jar and, uh, and Simsport still going at it here down the back straightaway into turn 17, trying to go the long way around. Some of these guys have been extremely good at keeping the car so tight on uh, in the corner, it seems, to me, but you know, when you do that, it really hurts your exit out of the corner. You saw Sam and just was not able to get the run down the straightaway as much as probably he would have liked. But also, as you mentioned, he's just not been as aggressive as uh, Menzara has been up ahead. It looks like Menzara's starting to pull away just a little bit. Get a top 10. It's only five seconds to get to the NSS cookie jar car. That's that green Corvette right here. Yeah, I don't think it's completely out of the question here with half an hour left in the race. Back in 13th, they have clawed their way forward, and they were within six tenths of a second of grabbing a tenth spot away from NSS Cookie Jar, who this team started all the way back in 22nd. Yeah, and I'm also looking at the cash potential taking that tenth place spot away, but now it uh, looks like Salvatore was able to get his way by the cash, who's not too terribly back, uh, far behind, only 2.6 seconds back from uh, Salvatore, but Salvatore about to make that pass for 10th. You'll see if uh, that Corvette 75 can uh, hold him up here. Just so impressed with how these Porsches get into and out of corners. And now on the slipstream of the Corvette, this should be a pretty straightforward pass. We'll juke out to the right. Provided that Sama doesn't put up too much of a fight here, he should be able to get by in turn 17. Yeah, it's really hard to maintain that outside in Sunset Bay. I mean, you can try to do an over under, which it looks like Sam is going to do, but nowhere to go. Whoa, slide on exit for Salvatore. Salmon tried to do the over-under there, but it just didn't quite work. You, I mean, you've got to be able to nose under. And there wasn't quite enough space left for that to happen. Into the slow stuff again, getting a little bit elbows out. You just carry so much speed in comparison to most other corners and a lot of other tracks. It's, you pretty much have to keep it tailored to high down for so then it leads to situations where you have a big, uh, a lot of a big uh, weight in behind you, and it really allows for a lot of slipstreaming for it to occur. The track always puts up some really good racing while it's fun. Daniel Salmon following Timothy Salvatore here. This is for 10th, an RSCC team under attack from that 75 car. Yeah, I'm a bit surprised that Salvatore is going to drive away from this, but uh, hasn't been able to do so. And you're talking about, yeah. and we'll move forward to find Cookie Jar and 613. That's Antoine Dacash finally catching this driver and team. He's been chasing him down for quite a while, so now it's finally he's been able to get a chance to strike for 11th place. Lock up into turn 14. I think Dakash is quicker. I don't know if he is going to have time to go run down 10th of, uh, of Timothy Salvatore. Ooh. Bit of a bobble there at the exit of 16. Yeah, especially with an off uh, going off like that, it's going to cost him a bit of time. But yeah, definitely has a shot of getting uh, Salmon up ahead. Keeping the pressure on. Here's Salmon and Antoine Dakash for 11th. Uh, Dakash is definitely quicker. It's just a matter of how fast he can get to the rear bumper of Salmon and maybe pressure him into a mistake. Lots of speed through turn number one. Working that wheel hard with eight and a half minutes to go. Yeah, up the middle of the curves here. Got to be very careful at this point. I mean, you do need to push. You have to make sure you don't make a mistake. A little wiggle up ahead from Salmon. In the slipstream now, it's only a matter of time, I think. Sun getting lower in the sky, the track cooling off. Down to 86. Remember, we started this event at 111 degrees Fahrenheit. 
and almost in the back of Daniel Salmon. Hasn't he almost been in the back of him before? Well, these horses have been in the back of uh, quite a few people, or almost <laughs> in the back of quite a few people. That, uh, that NSS cookie jar car has almost gotten that rear tailgate taken off five or six times this race. Turn number seven will focus back on the battle for 11th. run that Takash is building here through the S's, the fast portion of this racetrack. It's always amazing to watch how far out these drivers will go on the entrance to turn 16 to try to build that run. Sandman gets through there nicely. Yeah, I remember looking at Roberts early. He was going through in such a way where the curb was kind of kicking him out really wide. I'm not sure that was really hurting him or if that was on purpose. Five laps to go at the front of the field. Kosh and Sam, it's still the best battle on the racetrack at the moment. Four laps to go for the race leaders. And we are closing in on seeing a pass here if Takash can figure out where is best to make this maneuver on that, uh, oh. that Chevrolet Corvette. He actually backed off on the straightaways, which is kind of surprising because he wasn't that close to the back of them. Bit of a moment out of turn 17 as well. Continues to, or we continue to see the weather get cooler. 85 degrees now. We're going to go from max temp to min temp here pretty quickly. Oh, looks like Sam had just missed the apex in turn one. That can give Takashi a huge run on corner exit. But he wasn't close enough to totally capitalize on it. Yeah, definitely was able to close up here if he can get a good run through the next few corners out at turn number five in particular. I have a shot here uh, down the straightaway. We've seen time and time again how many how many times the course have been able to throw it up the inside into the circuit or on the outside. And they make it stick, and part of that is because of all the rearward weight bias. You can run a, a much uh, more rearward brake bias on these cars. Uh, and uh, you've got so much weight over the rear wheels that you can throw a lot of the brake bias to the rear wheels and hence slow the car down more effectively. Some of these other cars, the front engine cars specifically, uh, speaking of the BMW, uh, they are going to have to require a little bit more front brake because of, of the weight shifted towards the front of that car. So uh, the Porsches will have an advantage on corner entry and exit. Uh, they will struggle maybe a little bit in relation to top end and also mid corner speed, which is where the Ferrari uh, is really, really good. And the Corvette is sort of okay at everything. It's just it's not particularly amazing at any one task. It's also really stable, and, and the more comfortable you feel, if any of you know this, the more comfortable that you feel, the faster you can go. If you're always kind of chasing the rear end, you're not going to be able to push the car to the limit because you're going to be too focused on not crashing it. Yeah, exactly. That's, I think, really the big thing with... Yeah, he was trying to chase down uh, Pete Fitzsimmons and uh, pretty much sorted that out with Sim Fitzsimmons coming down a pit lane. Trying to get by the 75 car now. That is the cookie jar team of Dan Salmon. Looking down the rest of the order here. NSS Cookie Jar comes home in 14th after a pretty solid battle there with the 613 racing team car.